Hello and welcome to Redeem 2020 Ministries Friday Night Bible Study. This is the first Bible study of the year 2024, and I'm Jason Drake. Thank you for joining us. We're going to have an exciting time, and this is going to be a very important time of study. This may be the most important hour you've got to spend all year long. We're going to study in the book of Luke how Jesus grew as a young boy. You're going to find ways to apply this study to your personal life, and we're going to get real practical. I want you to learn tonight how you can succeed this year in 2024. I'm going to give you very practical steps. You need to get a notebook, something that you can write on and get a pen so that you can take notes. If you're listening while you're riding in a car, listen to it again when you get home. Use the practical steps and tips that I'm going to offer to you tonight to help you succeed this year, you can be successful and you can be doing what God has designed you to do. Okay, get your Bible out. Turn to Luke chapter 2 again. There's more in there that we need to study. Let's get into it. This is the first Bible study of 2024. And to me, that's, that's significant. This is not a time to reflect on last year. You could have done that before, before New Year's. That's kind of the time when I like to think about it. Holly and I were even discussing all the things that happened through the year because we enjoyed a lot of things that the events that took place. But now is the time to look forward. The beginning of the year, many people make resolutions, but I want to give you a little different perspective on how to think about your future and this year in particular coming up. So I believe that this is the time as God has ordained seasons, this is a time for us to look at what we believe God wants us to do this year and to think about what is this year going to look like for you? What do you want to see happen in your life this year? Now, I'm posing this question because I think we tend to just idly go through week after week, January included. And we don't often think ahead or plan ahead or set goals to accomplish things, especially things that we believe the Lord wants us to do. Yes, you and I, as, as members of a family, we are compelled to be involved in children and their growth. And then maybe you're involved in grandchildren. But I want you to take a, a little more purposeful look uh, at this year, because if you want anything to happen, if there's anything that you really see that you believe should happen in your life, you're going to have to take steps toward making that a reality. So I want to pose this question from the beginning. How can you be sure of success this year? How can you, let me ask it again, how can you be sure of being successful this year? Now, the assumption behind that is how do you determine success? We each have a different way to do that, to determine what's going to be a measure of success for our lives. But I was recently reading of a man who does this, and he interviews a lot of people, and he's very well connected. And he, he said he took uh, the time when talking to successful people to try and determine what they had in common. Of all people that he just, you know, he interviewed, so to speak, whether it was in different walks of life or no matter what age they were or men or women, he decided he wanted to research what it was that made those people successful. And he came down to one thing that he decided. And so I think you could be thinking about that right now. If you were to read uh, a, a, a report that started off that way. What do you think would be the thing that most successful people have in common? Nearly every one of them, actually, what they have in common. And what he concluded was the most successful people are not the most intelligent. They're not the richest. They're not people that are the oldest. They're not the people who have had the most experience. They're not people, the people who were born into the right family or come from a certain ethnic background. No, that wasn't it. He said, most successful people all have in common are people who get things done. It's as simple as that. 
The most successful people are those who get things done. So, in order to succeed, you're going to have to work at getting things done. And I would offer you to, tonight as well, because uh, our brother Anthony, a couple of weeks ago, or maybe it was worship last time, I wrote this down. He said he asked for prayer that he'd be able to focus this year coming up 2024. So I want to sort of layer these questions in your mind. If you're going to have to work at succeeding this year, you need to be determined on what it is you need to focus. What do you need to focus on? Now, let me also point out something that's become very, I've experienced a lot. You all know I think that I'm a, I'm a creative person. I'm an artist. And so I work on accomplishing things when it comes to my business, my art. But I've also discovered, and I've read some things to help me learn what this is all about. Whenever you start trying to succeed, you will encounter resistance. Think about what happens to most people when they make New Year's resolutions. They get started. Maybe they even get a good start. Maybe they even have a few weeks of uh, accomplishment, but then they really encounter resistance. If you've ever bought a treadmill or whatever, and you've finally watched it at the end of the year, you've watched it gathering dust, you know exactly what resistance is. Or you, you might join, some people joined a gym, you know, and, and so you found that if you wind up there or if you, if you try and go on a diet and it doesn't work or you've tried to break a, a bad, unwholesome habit, you'll find that there's a force that tries to stop you. And that's what I would call resistance. It's like interior self-sabotage. It's like a dark force that uses procrastination and all kinds of other things to get you to stop and stop what you know deep down you should be doing. So I want to help you tonight. I want you to find in this hour tonight the kind of help that's going to that's going to give you the ability to overcome resistance. Going to give you the ability to focus. And if you get nothing else out of this talk tonight, out of this Bible study, out of what we pull out of the scripture, I want you to do that. I want you to learn how, how to focus and fight resistance. All right? So we're going to look at the end of Luke chapter 2. This is the last story of Jesus before all the other stories of his ministry. We know from later on in Luke that Jesus started his ministry at what age? Somebody tell me, what age did Jesus start his ministry? 30. Age 30, that's right. Luke tells us that. So this part of Luke 2, this part of the scriptures, is the last uh, mention we hear of Jesus uh, when, in, in his childhood years. And what's interesting, I pointed out last week when we were discussing the different uh, gospels that were written. This one, Luke, is the only one that mentions this story, and it mentions Jesus. And he, uh, in this story, is the age of 12. So we are getting a glimpse, we believe very strongly, this is from Mary. Uh, his mother, and she would have remembered this. And we are going to see characteristics of Jesus' life at age 12 that I believe will help you and I today. We're going to make it very practical. So I mentioned at the beginning, and I'm going to ask again before we get into reading the scriptures. Get a piece of paper. Get something you can write on in a, in a pen or pencil. Now, even if you just scratch some quick notes tonight and you do some more thorough writing later, uh, I want to encourage you to do that. Get something that you can write on because there's going to be a lot of things here that will be very specific and practical. And I'm going to ask you while we're doing this tonight to, to, uh, to do that, to write. So let's get into um, our story tonight. And I'm going to share my screen so we can read these scriptures. Luke 2, we're going to start with chapter, I'm sorry, Luke 2. I call tonight Focus on Growing. That's the name I've given our study focus on growing. I, I think um, all of us have this desire to grow, to improve, to change, to uh, become uh, better at something. And so the difficulty we find, especially when it comes to focus, 
I want you to learn tonight how to overcome that. And so this is what uh, we're going to study. Turn in uh, the last verses. We're going to start with chapter 2, verse 41. And I've got it on the screen, so I need someone to please read for me, starting with chapter 2, verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. His mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature in the favor and in favor with God and man. Okay. Okay, there's our passage. Um, now, I want to quickly give you some orientation. I like doing this. I'm kind of a maps guy in many cases. And so here I've got a map of the nation of Israel during the time of Jesus. Uh, let's see. I need to get you to mute, my brother Cecilia, so we can, there you go, just so we can cut some background noise. Thank you. So here's this map of uh, Israel during the time of Jesus. I pointed the, the uh, little town of Nazareth, which is in the northern part of the Sea of Galilee, you see is in the white body of water there. And they would, <clears throat> it says they would go every single year all the way down to Jerusalem. Now, there's, I'm pointing to Jerusalem right there. Let me back a little bit. You can see the word. It's a little tiny, probably on your phone if you're looking on a phone. But there they had to go. And so they were going the whole body or the length of the nation there they had to pass through some area or go around it i think many of them did now don't forget uh, there was bethlehem right down there close by to jerusalem and so when they finished this story they went back so the parents it seems to it took more than a day the parents had to look for him or didn't see him and they didn't know where he was and they were heading back how far we don't know but they turned around returned to jerusalem in order to you know to find out what uh, he was doing and find him. They didn't even know where he was. So I don't think there's a whole lot of detail I want to try and digest about this, uh, but there's a few key points that will apply to you and I. So first of all, when you look at these verses, you see that they went from Nazareth every year at the Feast of the Passover. Why is that significant, somebody? What do you think that's significant? Why is the, the feast significant or why? Is... Well, the, the time of the year where they went, was that feast in particular something that uh, we should, you know, remember or take note of? They went every year on this particular feast. They went up to the, to every year of his life, it sounds like. Well, let me it point out, of course, that I'm sorry, go ahead. It was required. Well, yes, it was required. I'm sorry. I was kind of looking ahead. I'm thinking, here's Jesus in this story, this last story of his childhood. He's been going to up to the Passover every year of his life. He went to, and, and the last Passover that he attended was to be the Passover lamb. Every other year, it was to take a lamb for Passover. The last time he was, you know, he went up there. Not with his parents, I don't think, but with his disciples, he was the Passover lamb. Okay, think about that. That's part of the purpose of this feast. Now, we also know that the Passover feast was the feast in memory of when the last night that the Jews were in Egypt, 
and the angel of death passed over their houses and the blood of the lamb was spread on their doorpost. All these things I believe Luke included because Mary remembered them and yes, they were significant to the whole mission of Jesus. So this whole section of verses is still focused on what was his mission. Now, let's go forward a little bit more in this section. After three days, you see in the middle, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening and asking questions. And of course, they were all astonished. They were all amazed. And so his mother asks him this question. To me, she's probably posing a question that sounds a bit selfish. But, you know, I, I'm not going to try and go into that. What, why, what mother wouldn't say? Why have you done this to me? <laughs> Why have you done this to me? Mothers tend to do that. My mother did too. Why don't you write me enough? Yeah, okay. So his answer, and I want you to take note of this. Jesus didn't try to debate with her. And he also didn't try to discuss her assumptions. He answered with a question. I find that interesting and I think very informative for us. But he said, why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? Now, this translation says father's house. I've seen other translations that say, I was about my father's business. I was about my father's business. So here he is at 12 years old. They didn't understand. But what would you say then does this represent regarding even as a 12 year old boy, what was Jesus focused on? What was the focus of his, even more important than, okay, he knew this was going to happen. His parents would come back to find him. But he was, if he, this was his focus to be about his father's business. Now let's look at the last verse in this chapter. And I want us to take this verse seriously here. This one, the last one, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Let me point out again, this verse describes a focused 12 year old who was increased in wisdom. He, he increased, that means it also, by the way, the translation means he kept on increasing in wisdom, stature, favor with God and man. Let's take this apart a little bit. So I've highlighted these key words, take a look. I've highlighted the ones that I want us to focus on. Wisdom, stature, favor with God, and man. That's four different areas of his life. So let's talk about how those four areas fit. So I took them out now. I've broken them out from the verse. And we're going to look at what these, how these represent the areas of growth increasing increasing means he grew as a young man up until his time of ministry this was characteristic of jesus life and i'm wondering if we can learn from it so let's take a, a, a minute to look so first of all he increased in wisdom that means mentally jesus increased in mental knowledge and mental understanding jesus increased mentally the next thing it says he increased in was stature that means physically Yes, of course, a 12-year-old boy is not fully grown adult. So yeah, he, in, he grew physically, but it seems that there was, the scriptures want us to know, focusing on these, these four areas that Jesus grew physically. That was an area of his life. Now, here's the next one, favor with God. That's where he increased spiritually. Jesus grew spiritually. And the last one was favor with man. Jesus increased in relationships relationally is the one word i picked all these words have the l y ending mentally spiritually physically and relationally now it seems apparent that even at age 12 jesus knew his mission to be about his father's business and he was intentionally taking action to develop 
and try then to be, get to get to ready himself to do what God, what, what the father's business was for him. Now, I, I want to point out to you, here's a quote from a, a psychologist I like to read sometimes. And he says, don't allow yourself to become aimless and leave your future up to chance. I think this is something that Jesus' life is now telling us. Jesus was not aimless. Not only was he focused it's his, he, in his, by his own testimony, his own comments on his father's business, but he was well-rounded in the areas of growth. If you look again, here are these four areas, and Jesus was a well-rounded young man. Now, we can attribute that some of that to his parents, uh, certainly in his community, certainly the culture that he was in, the Jewish culture of the day, meaning that they had ways of educating their children. The synagogue was an important center of the community. He was taught in the ways of the scriptures. He was taught to memorize. We're very sure of that, the way that young you know, people, especially young men were raised at that time. They memorized God's word. So these things would all have contributed to his growth in these four areas. And the focus of his growth was, I want to grow in these four areas so that I can fulfill what God has made me for. All right, so this is what we're gonna to do tonight. I want us to take a look at these four areas of your, of your life. And I want you to pull out a piece of paper and write down these four words and put a little space in between so you can take and add some notes in between, mentally, physically, spiritually, and relationally. Now, I'm gonna stop for just a moment here. Let's see if I can do that. Mm -hmm. Let me stop sharing my screen. If you've written those things down, now we can refer to them, and I'm hoping you will do that with me so that we can uh, talk about you and talk about your year coming up. And I want you to think about, as a questions I posed at the beginning, about what you wanna see happen in your life. What do you want to see in terms of areas in which you want to grow or improve? And so, yeah, I could, I, I could go through all kinds of scripture uh, tonight and give you verses on each of these things. I really believe this is, uh, this verse summarizes or caps, encapsulates it very, very well for us. So I want you to think now about how to take these four areas and develop and just write down goals that you want to achieve in this area. Because any, any change, any growth is going to, I'm sorry, any growth is going to require that you change. And it usually requires an area of work and maybe even an area of sacrifice. And just like Peterson said, if you go through this week and you listen to our study tonight and you don't write anything down and you don't go back later and make this into some very practical ideas about how to apply this, you're just going to be aimless for the rest of the year. This is how you can focus. I'm going to give you this tool tonight so that you'll be able to focus on what you've written down as the goals and for you to be able to accomplish things this year in these four areas of your life. Now, if you're doing some other kind of program that's helping you, helping you to study and grow and follow some objectives, um, then you might want to take those areas and kind of filter them into what we're discussing tonight. But I'm going to ask you to write down specific goals under these four areas. Now, let me also point out a, a little bit uh, of clarification here. What are goals? Uh, some people intermix the word goals and objectives. But to me, let me point out that I'm using the word goals as something that is achievable, something that is measurable, and something so that kind of in short, when you're done, you can check the box and say, I've completed that goal. 
Now, when you do that, and many, many programs that you can be a part of will help you to understand, just working toward the goal becomes a growth process. And just working toward the goal becomes a way so that by the time you reach the goal, you will have accomplished a lot of short-term steps to get to the goal. So tonight, you might just write down a big, a big goal. You know what? A, a, big, a big thing that you want to accomplish. Uh, and then you can later write down some steps that you need to take to get to that goal. That's the important way to help you to accomplish this. Now, the other part of trying to apply this is you may want to write down new habits you want to develop. Rather than putting it in terms of a measurable goal, you may want to write, write in a habit that you want to build. So, so that you can start doing that habit this week, you can start applying and saying, okay, I'm going to do this habit, uh, which I know will make a difference in my life and will make a change and will help me grow. So you might write it down in terms of a habit. So what I'm also going to do is help you to overcome the biggest problem that people have a few weeks or months down the road. They forget about what they wrote. They forget about what they decided. They forget about what they're aiming at. And then they get discouraged. And then they figure, well, gosh, you know, I, went, I tried this last year and it didn't work. And so I guess I'm just not going to be able to succeed at it. Now, I want you to write down what I mentioned to you, and I want you to get it on a piece of paper. Or I'm just, I'm just showing you, I use a three by five card, you know, just a simple one like this. You might have a notebook. I, uh, I use a notebook, you know, with lines, and I just write all my things that I'm trying to accomplish or spiral, you know, kind of notebook. Or you might have uh, something on your phone that you use. But whatever it is, it needs to be a visibly written goal or habit that you are going to build. I want to give you some examples, and then I'm going to give you some tips on how you can make sure that you, number one, focus, and number two, that you can stay on track, and that you, um, even if you stumble, even if you go for a few weeks and think, I didn't do it again, you can get back on track. All right, so let's take one, each one of them, the four we talked about. And the first one is mental, all right? What can you do this year to create a goal that'll help you grow mentally? Uh, maybe it's a book you can read. I mean, just name, keep the goal simple. Make it even easy to accomplish. There is something powerful about accomplishing a goal that will help you towards, we've got four areas, maybe you've got four goals that'll help you towards the others. But keep it simple. Don't make too many goals or something that's too hard. Maybe you've got a book you've been thinking of reading and that's going to be your goal mentally this year. I'm going to read a book. Uh, maybe one of your goals would be to, i tell you what, I am going to change it over and I am going to share my screen again because I've got some notes here that I want to share with you. So maybe um, mentally I've written some ideas. This is going to help you uh, in, in some ideas. So maybe it's take a class. You've always been talking about wanting to learn to do something that'll help you develop and help you grow. So maybe it's take a class, read a book, listen to an audio book. Maybe you have access to some audio books and you wanna make sure you hear that, listen to that book while you're driving. So now every time you go driving, every time you go commute to work, every time you're taking a long trip somewhere, you decide, hey, we haven't finished that book or I haven't finished that book and I wanna to listen to it and you just finish the book, even if it's a long book, that's got quite a few hours. Maybe you join a club, a book club. Maybe you decide that you want to make it a habit of going to the library every week. Maybe you're just going to do crossword puzzles that'll develop you mentally. Not, you know, kitty level stuff. We're talking about a crossword puzzle book or something that will keep you challenged. Maybe you're going to play word games. You know, a lot of us have time with our grandchildren. And they get to the age where they can learn through games and you can use games to teach them. And so maybe you're gonna make a list of games that you wanna do with your grandchildren or your children. 
And so I'm telling you, look them up and write them down. And some of the ones that will expand your use of words like Scrabble, my family, we've been done Scrabble for years. I'm not talking about games like card games. I'm talking about Scrabble. Dominoes. You can do dominoes with your children and teach them or your grandchildren and teach them how to count. Holly's really good at this stuff. Maybe you're going to write letters. These are all mental things to develop your thoughts and maybe you can join a, sp a spelling bee or maybe your child or your grandchild. You're going to encourage them to participate in a spelling bee competition and you're going to be the one to, to drill them every time you're together on these words. And that means you're going to have to expand your spelling capabilities. Any of these ideas. All right. I want to give you two minutes and I want you to write something down. And then I'm, going to, I, you, I'm not going to ask you to share it. Just write down something that you think would be an important mental goal. Ready, set, go. Still buffering. Don't want to. Oh, just want to show a picture. Yes, oh. I am. <laughs> Hi, Jason. Oh, it doesn't. It's Hi. buffering. Buffering. Well, if you, if you can hear us, or maybe you just uh, quit out of your Zoom and try and launch it again. But I think for the most part, if you can hear, then you'll be able to really pick up what we are, what we've been studying, and what we're talking about. Okay, I'll give you one more minute. Write down something mentally you can do this year and accomplish. Okay. Ooh, we don't have quiet and silence in our Bible study usually, but this is good. I want you to focus. Focus on writing something down. Um, all right, I'm going to stop you right there. And let's go to the next one. The next one is physical. So, did I write this down physically, spiritually? Oh, you know what? That's my spiritual goals. Hold on a second. Let's go back to physical. And I didn't, uh, I didn't put down the ones that I wanted to do physical. Oh, you know what? I didn't. All right. I'm going to take that off the screen because I don't have the rest of there. So think of something physical. Physical goals might be, you know what? I want to, maybe it's to start an exercise program. Maybe, you know what Holly and I are going to do starting next Monday? We're going to do a fast, a 21-day fast. 21 days. But our fast is going to be from sugar. We're going to cut all the sugar out of our diet. That's our fast. So maybe you set up a goal like that physically. Maybe one of your physical goals is weight loss. Maybe it's just to walk. And so you set your physical goals by saying, by the end of this year, I want to be able to walk a mile. You just start off by walking two blocks. Do it, you know, every other day. Maybe it's I'm going to walk two blocks every other day as much as I can. I'm going to make this my goal. By the end of the year, I can walk a mile. And that's a worthy way to make a physical goal. Another physical goal might be to join a group that is doing some exercise. And that's the way you're going to get your goal accomplished. I'm going to, by the end of this year, I'm going to be a part of a group that's regularly doing some kind of physical exercise together or activity. Maybe it's a walking group, just simple, something simple like that. Just so that at the end of the year, you'll be able to see, did I accomplish that? Okay, we're going to, I'm going to let you write down. Your, your goals, and you got two minutes. Write down a physical goal that you can accomplish this year. Go ahead, two minutes. Think about physical goals. Something simple, something you can accomplish, something that uh, that just means growth for you, something you haven't been able to physically do before, or that you you know, and, it, and you're going to have to take write down some steps later after our study tonight that give you interim steps that you can take. Okay. How much time? I said I'd give you two minutes. I've got forty five seconds left. Write down some thoughts here. 
use. All right, let's stop now. So that is your physical goals, all right? Now I am gonna share my screen for the next one, which is spiritual goals, okay? Here are some spiritual goals that you can use. Now don't forget, we're talking about mental, physical, and now spiritual, your relationship with God. So I've got some things up to here. Attend Bible study. You know what? That's something you can accomplish every week. Be here for Bible study. Maybe you want to join a different Bible study, another one. Maybe you're part of a local church that's got a Bible study activity, or you go to listen to a particular teacher, and you say, okay, I'm going to go join that Bible study and that small group of people, and I'm going to be faithful. People that you can see every week and be with. Read a book. Read a good uh, book. I've got one here that I'm going to be reading. Uh, can you see me in there? This one by uh, my friend Ray Comfort, So Many Lions. And so my goal this year is to read this book because it's got a lot of spiritual help for me. Listen to a Bible teacher online. Maybe you're going to make part of your goal is that I'm going to listen once every week to a message from a Bible teacher, or I'm going to join a small group, or I'm going to join a local church, or I'm going to learn to share my faith. Now, one of my spiritual goals that I wrote down here, because I, I, you know, I've got all these in here. I told you about my physical goal, Holly and I doing this uh, no sugar fast. And if I, by the way, if if next time next weekend when we're having worship i'm a bit cranky you'll understand why um so spiritually i'm going to do three things i'm going to memorize one verse per week i told you many times how my mother did that when i was growing up and all through my college years i memorized verses but i stopped now that's put a lot of stuff in my mind a lot of scripture in my mind but i'm going to go back to doing that and let me point out to you because we talked about scripture memory before um that you oh, need to goodness. learn how to do this you need to learn how to go into businesses and pick up their free business cards that they put in the front on the counter. Because you know what? It's not stealing. They want you to have it. And then on the back side, you write the Bible verse that you're memorizing. This is where you keep the Bible verses that you're memorizing. Yes, I write very small. Uh, but you keep Bible verses on that card, and now you can carry it with you in your pocket, in the car. You can set it on the dashboard. You can review it when you're at a stoplight. You can review it while you're waiting in the DMV, any of those places. Or you can do it on a three-by-five card. Here's another one of my verses written on a three-by-five card. And so that's another way, but you've got to write it down. If you want to succeed, you've got to write it down. So get a bunch of three-by-five cards at the grocery store, just a little package of them. And you'll have them ready to, for this particular purpose. But don't be afraid to go into businesses and say, hey, did you mind if I have one of your business cards? Oh, sure. Take a couple of them. And then you start collecting them so you can have a great place to write your, uh, your verses. All right. So those are spiritual goals. Another thing I'm going to do this year is spiritual goal is I want to share Jesus. I want to share Christ and the gospel with my neighbor, Chris. And I've got to write that down. I've got to make that my goal. I've got to take steps to talk to Chris about spiritual things. You and I are, are called to bring the gospel to the whole wide world. And if you're not doing that through sharing the, your faith with other people, and if you don't write it down and do it purposely, oh, does it seem like this is a checkbox? I'm just doing it so I could check a box? No, you know what we're talking about here. Let's go to the last one. The last one is uh, relationally. And for relational I put down to that I'm going to find a new person, a new partner to play tennis with this year and develop a new relationship with somebody I don't previously know. Develop relationships. Joining a church, a local church, joining a small group, um, doing something that will get you around other people, but you've got to make a goal, a relational goal. My goal, as I said to you, is to find some a new tennis partner to get tennis with so that while I'm doing one activity, I'm fulfilling a goal of developing a, a relationship with somebody new so that why so that i can share jesus with them that's that's part of my relational goals but jesus increased in those goals and that's what we need to be doing let me let's let's finish up here let me tell you about the keys to success because you're going to have stumbling times when you're going to stumble and fall you're going to have times when you feel like i i, I just i blew it again you know what? Here's the keys to success. Number one, pray. 
Lord, I'm committing this to you. When you write these down, when you finish com coming up with this, and by the way, you should be reviewing these goals. The reason I asked you to write it down is because you need to be reviewing these goals. And I'll explain to you how that can help you. But if you write them down and you have that piece of paper available, don't lose it. Don't throw it in a drawer. Don't put it someplace where you won't find it. Have it so that you can see it every day. So you need to also review, write it down and review it. The next thing is ask someone else to hold you accountable. This is a very big key toward accomplishing goals. Just share one goal with somebody. Hey, this year I'm trying to, and then you tell them what the goal is and ask them to hold you accountable. Now, I said the next thing is review it. And here's what I want to give you as a tip. Don't review it every morning. Do not review it first thing in the morning. That will not ensure your success. What will ensure your success, I guarantee it, is if you will review it at night before you go to bed. If you pull out that list before you go to sleep every night, have it somewhere right or handy because you will start planting the seeds of those goals in your mind while you sleep and it will help you think about your next day. You won't be aimless when you wake up in the morning. You will have already thought about, well, let's see, what do I need to do to help me accomplish these goals? The last thing I said, next to the last I said is change your environment. This is one of the things that's most important toward developing good habits. When Holly and I start our sugar less diet, we're gonna get rid of sugar. We're gonna get rid of the things in our house and we're gonna stop buying things that we know are just going to add sugar to our meal. And we're gonna stop drinking iced tea. Do you understand? I live in the South. I live in the South of the US of A. Sweet tea, sweet tea is like, it, it, nobody drinks water. We drink sweet tea. And sweet tea, if, if you go to a restaurant and you ask for tea, they're gonna give you sweet tea. This is part of our, our, our uh, ambition. So we're gonna cut out sweet tea, all right? So you gotta change your environment. If you're trying to accomplish these physical goals, you may have to start, you know, get a pair of good walking shoes and get out and walk or running shoes or whatever it takes. Go get them. That's a part of your steps toward accomplishing the goal, but that's helpful in changing your environment. Also, don't be around people who are gonna drag you into the old habits. If you're trying to get free of a habit, you've got to change your environment. Studies were done after World War II. All the GIs came home, smokers, because they were all given cigarettes by the U.S. government. I was in the military in the 70s. Every time we got a meal when we were out in the field doing our practice for all kinds of you know, um, field you know, exercises, you'd get a pack of food and there'd be cigarettes in it. So the way that you change your environment, these guys would come home, by the way, and everybody smoked when they came back from World War II. They found that the ones who quit were the ones who changed their environment. They got away from people who were smokers. That's what you've got to do too. And the final one is keep short accounts. What does that mean? That means be accountable to the person that you've asked and keep short accounts by checking in. Checking and, and maybe you've got a mutual agreement towards helping each other. So you check in and keeping short accounts means, okay, Lord, if I blew it, I'm going to confess it and I'm going to get right back on and I'm going to get right back onto these goals. Let me show you here. Stephen Pressfield is a guy who I, I've got one of my goals this year is to read his book again. I read it seven years ago, but I'm going to read his book again. He says, we can control how hard and how smart we work. You can't control a lot of other things. But this is what you can control. Let me share one last verse with you. Psalm 1, 1 to 3. And this is about success. That's what I was talking about tonight. I'm praying for each of you that this will be a key toward you having a successful year. Applying what Jesus what was said of Jesus in Luke 2.52. It's a verse my mother taught me to memorize when I was a boy. But this one is another one. It's Psalms 1, 1 to 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. That means he's changed his environment, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. Maybe you should be reading your Bible in the morning and reading it at night. He is like a tree. This is the results of a man who is committed that way or a person 
They're like a tree planted by a stream of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. You sometimes meet people like that. They seem to prosper in just about anything they, they work on. Well, this is the key, the Bible says, to prosper, prospering under God's direction. And so that's what I want you to take away from tonight. Now, I think I tried to give you some real clear help about how to write these goals, how to pull that piece of paper out in another day or two, even before our worship on Sunday, and write out a little bit more to make these measurable goals. Because if you shoot at nothing, you'll hit it every time. So that's what we're doing here is we're going to aim for these things that you, you listen to what the Lord's telling you. You're going to look for someone who wants to keep you accountable. So how can you keep from being distracted? Well, number one is that piece of paper and reviewing it at night. And then that accountability, that review, and then also having measurable steps or measurable goals. Don't make them too big. Don't, don't try to tackle too much. Even if, look, even if at the end of the year, you just accomplish these simple things that we wrote down tonight. You will grow. So that's going to be uh, the way I, I, I trust. I believe God's going to bless you this year. Did you miss our Bible study last week? Or would you like to listen to other previously recorded studies with topics that will encourage you in your faith and help you to understand the scriptures even more? go to our website, redeem2020ministries.org. Click on Bible study in the menu at the top of the screen, and there you'll find our section where we have listed previously recorded studies.